All right, everyone. Uh, hello and welcome again to the show we have here on epilepsy and, uh, and daily life. And today we have a very special guest uh, all the way from down under Australia, Emma Beitentag, uh, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Epilepsy Western Australia. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me on. How are things over there? Because here in Europe we are having summer, we are having nice temperatures, but uh, Australia is having winter, uh, having the winter season right now. How's how's that like? Yes, that's right. And it depends which part of Australia you live in, because Australia, of course, is is a huge, huge country, uh, huge island, actually, the largest island that exists. Um, and in, so, in some places, it's still very warm, sort of in the top end. And in other places, it's, it's cold or even uh, in the high country, snowing in some states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So indeed, I can assume that in some parts the, the temperatures might might be <clears throat> rather close to what we would call summertime in, in Europe. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so I would very much like to, to, to be speaking with you today about epilepsy in Australia, because as you may know, uh, and as our followers know, uh, EpiHunter is mainly uh, operating in Europe. Um, and Actually, uh, just a few days ago, we were so pleased to announce that EpiHunter will be available uh, both in Australia and New Zealand through our collaboration with Seizure Alert uh, Australia. Um, so that's, that's absolutely wonderful news. Um, and maybe we can first speak about um, epilepsy in Australia and maybe initially the work that you do for your organization. What kind of organization is Epilepsy Western Australia? Sure. So we were we were founded in 1963. And so we're a small not-for-profit, but we're actually a really active not-for-profit that is fighting to raise awareness, reduce stigma around epilepsy, uh, help educate the community and help support the community. Uh, we're also pas passionate about raising awareness of, of epilepsy-related deaths, uh, risk management, and we have quite quite a large number of services uh, that are available across Western Australia, be it in person or via uh, video link or the telephone. Uh, we have a network of support groups and they are usually face to face. Unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, we've had to move those to online mode. Uh, but we're hoping because things are going so well in Western Australia with COVID, uh, subject to medical advice, we're hoping we might be able to resume those face to face from August. Yeah, yeah. that's um, that's wonderful. Yeah, indeed, the, the, the pandemic has, has changed a little bit the way we are we are uh, dealing with with the community and how they can engage with us. But at the other side, it has also opened up the possibility for them to engage online. And uh, do you see any uh, more engagements in, in how people are, for example, sharing their stories on social media and how they are reaching out to you? I um, think it, it has in some ways helped to bring the community together. Um, our social media page is, is highly active and it's certainly a source of support um, and togetherness for our Western Australian community. Uh, I think the challenge for organisations, especially organisations like ours that don't get any government funding and we are sort of battling to get by but trying to do as much as we can to help, uh, when the, the corona situation happened, we had, we had to think very quickly. Uh, we couldn't stop our services. We had to keep our services going. So, for example, our seizure alert bed mats that we loan out free of charge, people used to come into the office and we used to show them how to, to use the mat and then they'll take it away with them and take it home. We've switched that to uh, postal based and we actually get a, uh, the, the post will deliver it to them and we've now got a video which explains to them how to set it up. So, you just have to get, get creative. Um, yeah, but certainly, yeah. we're getting a lot of engagement on the telephone phone our compassionate ear service is really busy so is our information line and certainly on uh, Facebook you know a lot of engagement there I think everyone yeah. is um, looking to connect and stay connected and and if I may ask what are the like typical questions or topics that people would bring up when when they are reaching out to you 
Oh, it really can be such a wide number of reasons that people call. It may be they've, they've been newly diagnosed. It may be that a child's been diagnosed. It may be that they've had epilepsy a long, a long time, but they just have hit a bump in the road and they really need a helping hand. Um, sometimes it's that someone's lost a loved one. Um, mm -hmm. Often we get people calling about seizure alert technology uh, because it's something that, that we uh, do promote a lot. Um, we want to make sure that people are aware of their options so that they can um, make a choice that's right for their circumstance. Um, and that's something that we, we've, we've been promoting and we have a display in our office. Um, mm -hmm. so, so quite a, a high number of our calls are actually about seizure alert options. People are hungry for information. They want to know what's available. And that's not just people living Living with epilepsy and their loved ones, but it's actually medical professionals, sort of OTs as well, uh, mm -hmm. want to know what are the options. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, um, yeah, many tools uh, comes from Europe and the US, for example. Like, um, does it take a little longer before it reaches you in Australia? And can you tell a bit like how um, how are you working with or, or your organization to collect information about these tools and how? Can you or your end kind of push that, that these tools becomes available um, in Australia? Sure. So um, what we, we don't do is we don't actually sell them ourselves um, and we don't push any particular device over another device. What we aim to do is just to raise awareness of what's out there, what's available and make it easy for our community. Uh, it, we've actually done a fact sheet, actually. Make it easy for our community to, to quickly see what their options are um, and how to contact the supplier of the various devices so then they can make a de decision that suits for them. Uh, certainly a lot of the devices do come from overseas. However, there are there are several companies that sell, do sell devices in Australia. Now, the ones that come from overseas, uh, there is some shipping delays, but for example, example, the Empatica Embrace watch that you'd be familiar with that comes, um, I believe, from America, uh, it's pretty swift and my community is telling me that they arrive um, really quickly. Uh, we are trying to get a very large display of seizure alert technologies in our office and we're, we're now up to number nine. Okay. Uh, so, so whenever we can, we, we order um, beg, borrow or steal a seizure alert <laughs> device to add to our collection just to help us educate the communities, let them know what their options are so that they can make make, make a choice that's right for them. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and there do indeed exist um, a couple of, of uh, very uh, novel devices. I, I uh, know also very well the Empathica, which is more for the tonic-clonic seizures. I know that uh, Nightwatch is available for nighttime seizures, but uh, a seizure tracker for axon seizures didn't didn't really exist um, in Australia up until now with with EpiHunter. Okay. Did you get a lot of questions from families with axon seizures if there were something for them? Yes, absolutely. So up until um, I heard of the EpiHunter, um, our answer to people was always these devices are aimed at detecting convulsive tonic-clonic type seizures. Then you've got, um, of course, the night watch, um, which is you'll be you'll be very familiar with um, from your neighbours um, in Europe as well. Um, and then there's also the pulse guard from the UK, which are heart rate tracking. They may pick up a seizure that um, that. Uh, uh, results in a change of heart rate, whether that be too high or too low, but still generally it's going to be a convulsive type seizure um, in nature that it would pick up. So at the point that, that I heard about the Epi Hunter, if someone asked, is there anything to pick up an absent seizure? The answer would have been no. Whereas now we can say, have you heard about the Epi Hunter? And this is certainly worth exploring. Here's the details of where you can purchase it. And then people can 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 ask um, Seizure Alert Australia for more information and do their research and decide if it's right for them. So that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, well, one of the challenges that we have over here in Europe is when it comes to to reimbursement. So obviously, for for drugs and certain treatments, uh, reimbursement op op options are available. But when it comes to uh, comes to these kind of tools and technology, it, it's slightly harder. Um, are there any differences in Australia to to how how reimbursement, uh, how to say, is is available for for these kinds of tools? 
Sure. So it is tricky also in Australia. Um, often it is the case that people will purchase the devices uh, with their own money or their loved ones um, will invest in the devices. Uh, here, we are lucky to have something called the NDIS. Um, that's the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's not without, without red tape and it's not without fault. So um, sometimes people can access seizure alert technologies through the NDIS. And my understanding is uh, it is getting easier to do so. However, it's not always a, a straightforward process. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we do and um, that we're passionate about is trying to demystify things for our community. Uh, if we can't help them, we can put them on a pathway to another service that can. Uh, we do run um, NDIS um, workshops and actually it was called Demystifying the NDIS. And uh, once we can run workshops again, um, once the corona situation eases, I'm sure that's another topic that we will, we will touch on again. And things are constantly changing and always room for improvement. But when you look at the circumstances in, in some places around the world, we we are, um, in terms of epilepsy treatment, care and seizure alert technologies, very, very lucky in Australia. Yeah, uh, well, it's always always um, fantastic to see how also the community and then the, the, the families uh, or the adults using tools like EpiHunter are actually championing on, champion on the, the, the disease uh, of ep epilepsy and, and actually convincing their doctors um, of the value of using these kind of, of products. So, so that's, of course, fantastic as well. Um, but maybe talking about a different topic, maybe just as important as, as, these, as these tools, is also the, the new research ongoing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like the, the, yeah, the, the research network uh, within epilepsy in Australia and, and are there any um, yeah, universities or, or, or clusters uh, which, which might be more known to, to, to others? Absolutely. Um, there's quite a lot of epilepsy research that goes on in Australia. Um, and we even have some some very uh, exciting sort of ge genetic epilepsy research here in, in WA. Uh, also, the University of Melbourne is highly active, um, as are some other universities. Um, and there's been some very interesting findings out of these universities and from studies in collaboration with some of the leading epileptologists and neurologists. Uh, I'm always very interested in the uh, the social aspects of epilepsy and those findings, for example, around uh, depression or suicide rates or around accidents and injuries. And, and those figures are often, when they're released, quite staggering. And, and that's an area which, which I, I am passionate about raising awareness of. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, um, the mental health side is, is obviously very important. Um, and, and next to that also comes, comes the daily life impact in terms of, of uh, for example, one of the parents having to stop working. At least that's, what, that's something that we see a lot in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, having a child diagnosed with, with epilepsy um, might require some changes in people's life. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, families in Australia are coping with this and, and are there any, how to say, um, other ways for them to get help uh, besides meeting their physicians or maybe also then yeah. relating back to the work that you are doing and what kind of support can they find um, for, from you? So it really depends uh, where the, the family are. Um, there is um, a lot of services available to support families, but of course, when you're in crisis, it's not always easy to find the strength to access those services and it takes energy to access services. So um, I think I said before about pathways to support. We do, uh, we can't be everything for everybody. So we try and also connect our community to services that, that, that may assist them further. So for example, in, in Western Australia, if you had a child with epilepsy and you were often attending the children's hospital, uh, there's a fantastic organisation called Calparin and um, it would be useful to join Calparin. There's 
many not-for-profits that are related to, to us or work collaboratively with us or that we know of, that we tell people about because they offer a great service. And I think when you're you're living with the challenges of epilepsy or caring for a loved one with epilepsy, um, sometimes you just need as much help as you can get. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and how can people uh, find uh, your organisation? Uh, on, on which uh, platforms are you are you reachable? So we're very active on Facebook. So uh, it's just forward slash epilepsy WA. And we have a website. We've actually got a, a brand new website, um, which was a long time in the coming because, because um, money is very tight. Um, it was a long time in the coming, but we, we, we've, we've just launched that. So that's www.epilepsywa.asn.com. AU. Uh, unfortunately, I don't tweet. We probably should tweet, but we don't. Or is tweeting is tweeting out or in? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but we're on Instagram. <laughs> but Facebook's our main. Facebook's our main social media avenue. Yeah, that's fantastic. Absolutely. So we will definitely um, ask the community to find you uh, and definitely check out also the new website. Uh, as I assume, you will be having a lot of useful links and, and resources for people to check out. Um, maybe to, to, to end this conversation, um, do you have any advice to uh, people who have recently received a diagnosis either themselves or, or for, for one of their uh, children? Like what, what, what can you uh, offer as, as, uh, as advice for those? For people in Western Australia or, or anywhere, you contact your local epilepsy association, contact an epilepsy support charity. Um, there are people here who are wanting to help and offer a compassionate ear. In terms of people in WA, I um, mean Western Australia, um, I would implore them to reach out to us so that we can let you know about all our various services. Uh, you would be able to join a support group and sometimes just meeting others in the similar or same circumstance as you can, can um, be a great way to reduce your burden. Um, it's a way that you can actually get information that's relevant um, and up to date. Um, and just utilise utilize the various um, services that we have, such as our webinars. So we actually have free webinars on our website and those webinars are addressing um, issues such as um, seizure triggers, so epilepsy and sleep, um, side effects such as epilepsy and memory. And that webinar actually talks about strategies in terms of if people are struggling with their memory, whether it be due to medication side effects or the epilepsy itself, um, that webinar has some really useful strategies that people may want to adopt. So it would be to, to ring your local um, Epilepsy Association. And in Australia, actually, the number is 1300 852 853. Um, and then you'd be put, put through to your local Epilepsy Association. Um, but reach out and don't be afraid to say you, you, you need help. I think this, the statistic is that one in two people with epilepsy will, will have depression. So it's okay to say you're not okay and that you need a helping hand and there is a lot of information available and it can be overwhelming so so reach out to us or to organizations similar to us so we can help um, un unweave the, the tangled web and 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 help you on 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 the pathway to to support services and that we are here for you wow that's um that's great i i'm sure it will be highly appreciated um, for people anyway, anywhere in the world to hear the, the, the support which is available. And obviously, the, the epilepsy community is so strong when it's coming together, isn't it? Clubbing together for, for the disease and, and bringing, um, bringing change into car, care pathways, bringing change into how the general public is, is approaching this. And, and while you were talking, I was also thinking, um, so maybe when people have indeed been engaged uh, with epilepsy for some time, they maybe also want to join uh, forces with your organization and, and volunteer. Can you maybe also explain how people can, can, yeah, can do this? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we do offer volunteering opportunities. At the moment with, with COVID, it's a little bit tricky um, because we, we, although we're very lucky in Western Australia um, that the community spread seems to be under control, we are still operating social distancing and we're trying to limit the number of people in the office. Uh, but each year we actually have a big purple walk for epilepsy awareness and it's a, a really, it's actually a special day. It's quite an emotional day and uh, we always welcome people to, to, to come and, and volunteer, but also to participate in that event. Uh, also, we have an annual street appeal where we actually go out shaking tins on, on the streets of, of Perth and other, other towns in Western Australia to, to try and raise vital funds to, to keep our organisation and our services going. And of course, the awareness raising um, that that day does is just priceless also. Fantastic. Well, thank you uh, so much again for joining us. Um, and also then in addition to finding them um, on Facebook and on your website, where I also believe uh, one of these webinars, uh, you interviewed Tim, uh, the founder of EpiHunter, uh, also father of a son with, uh, with epilepsy. Um, uh, thanks again for joining and uh, I wish you all the best. I, I indeed hope that with the pandemic and everything, um, things will be coming more and more back to normal, uh, that you are able to indeed uh, keep engaging with the community. And uh, and yeah, I wish you a very, very pleasant, well, summer time uh, here in Europe, but uh, maybe winter over there. Thank you. It was good to talk to you and we wish you all the best. And we really are delighted about the Epi Hunter coming to Australia. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Fantastic indeed. So if you would like to request more information or place an order for Epi Hunter, you can browse to uh, seizurealertaustralia.com.au. So that's also a link to, to follow. Um, thanks again and, and speak soon, Emma. Look forward to it. Bye.